Michael, appreciate you hopping on today. Really excited to dive into Sweet Chameleon. Very uh, innovative product in the market. That's much different than what a lot of us see. So anyway, thanks for coming on and uh, excited to dive into it. Great to be here. Thanks. So first, let's start background inspiration. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you ultimately came up with uh, the idea for Sweet Chameleon and, and how it's evolved over time. Absolutely. So this idea was actually rooted uh, in my brain 35 years ago when uh, I made the worst decision of my life being a Jets fan. And uh, because they sucked and still do, I still can't, couldn't get the appropriate level of collectibles and team swag that I wanted. And it stuck with me all these years. And when technology caught up to the ability to really capture the long tail of of fandom for everyone. It was the catalyst for me to leverage my background in licensing and marketing from MTV to Time Warner and my experience running a digital marketing agency to capitalize on technology that includes 3D printing and additive manufacturing technology, FC authentication and security and AI to bring these digital collectibles to market in a meaningful way. Very cool. Uh, and in terms of the collectible market as a whole, I'd love to just understand a little bit better uh, before we dive more into Sweet Chameleon, because we all saw the rush of NFTs, which was more on the digital side. But physical collectibles, we've all probably had sports cards or some form of posters or something that we called a collectible at, at some point. I know I certainly had, a, I still, I think there's a shoe box somewhere at my parents' house of probably a, a million of them. But anyway, you know, give us the, the landscape a little bit about the uh, nuances of each each collectible side. Sure. So traditional hard good collectibles are the starting lineup action figures, you know, the tickets you used to take home from a game and there were limited options. This is, you know, this is my going back to my jet fan issue. You know, as a kid, I could choose from Montana or Jerry Rice or Dan Marino but no New York Jets. It was one size fits all. They were mass produced from a mold, probably overseas and sold into retail. On the digital side of things, obviously you have NFTs, which, which took off, but at the same time, were not tangible, were required a, a, you know, a digital locker or wallet of some sort and didn't provide the same loving response that even you shared earlier with your shoebox full of collectibles and, mm -hmm. and tickets. People want something tangible that they can look at in a meaningful way on a daily basis. But imagine providing the engagement factor and the evergreen ability to engage with that collectible in a meaningful way to bring up offers, content, concert set lists, box scores, and even AR, VR experiences as we evolve. Very cool. And so at Sweet Chameleon, I guess, give us the high level overview of, of them, what you've built and how you're positioned uh, a little bit in between both, it seems. Sure. So we, we are, we're creating fidgetal collectibles, which is a goofy name, but at, at our core, we have the ability to leverage 3D printing technology, which requires no minimum order quantities, no inventory, <clears throat> excuse me, and an elastic supply chain that allows us to be in market within a matter of weeks. So we can capitalize truly on real time events and activities. As in addition to that, we are leveraging dynamic QR codes, NFC chip technology and AI to enable fans to consistently scan or, um, or tap their collectible for that corresponding digital content. It's an evergreen experience. And from a brand and IP perspective, it's a marketing Trojan horse for whether it be a team or an athlete to be able to easily plug into their fan on a more personal and one-to-one -one basis. And from Sweet Chameleon, you know, where is it at today? What are some of the some of the clients you're working with? Some of the products you've built or fidget? How do you say that word? Fidget? Digital. 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 <laughs> yeah, man, that is a funky one. You know, what what are some of the ones that you put out into the market? Uh, give us some, you know, case studies or, or some cool uh, sure. high level partnerships. So we are very excited to be again a very young company who has been able to secure IP agreements and licenses with the NBA 
and now Major League Baseball. And we have a robust pipeline, uh, both in sports with additional leagues, entertainment with uh, IP owners such as Paramount and Warner Brothers, as well as evolving conversations with game publishers. And just to share, uh, you know, some samples of what we are doing, we are creating collectible, tangible tickets, corresponding QR codes that will activate and lead to, uh, to footage and, uh, and highlights for events uh, to be able to share this as a collectible, tangible utility. In the case of the NBA, developing uh, collectible jerseys, not only for superstars like LeBron, but for all 450 NBA players. Uh, the ability to select the home jersey, road jersey, City Connect, for those players to in, eventually be able to uh, connect with those fans as a premium collectible, to have a private YouTube gated chat room where they can connect with their fans on a you know after a game on a weekly basis. Uh, for video game publishers, we have the ability to validate credentials and render your avatar and be able to customize different weapons and realms. Uh, right now in the video game market, there is almost 100% leakage in terms of those types of collectibles. And your avatar will go with you everywhere. The ability to personalize and customize that experience, again, with no minimum order quantities, only manufacturing what we sell is a huge first mover advantage for us, along with the amazing IP partners that we are working with. Yeah, it's very cool looking at the ticket from the MLB side. So from a fan engagement perspective, I guess you go and launch a, a ticket for the for the MLB, or maybe it's a specific team. You know, what, what are the advantages, the sweet chameleon of that all happening? What are the advantages to the MLB team? What are the advantage, advantages to the fan? You know, what what's sort of the full flywheel of, uh, you know, benefits to everyone. Sure. So from a, a team perspective, it can be obviously an uh, ancillary revenue generator from thin air. There's no molds. There's no upfront costs that need to be created. There is straight ancillary revenue that can be derived from either a direct to consumer uh, within the team store perspective or from a wholesale relationship. It can be a reward mechanism, you know, for for teams to share with season ticket holders. This is something we just created for the Sixers to celebrate Joel Embiid's seventy point night. That can be aggregated as a a reward component for the team. It can also be sponsored, bringing in team sponsors as a way to optimize their sales team and sponsorship with the team by appending their brand to that collectible. The other big value add to the team itself is the ability to update those offers, whether it be, again, via that dynamic QR code with the whole you know, idea of driving people back to the arena, back to the stadium, whether it's a discount on merch or at uh, the concession stand or it's simply super serving them with exclusive content. It might be an exclusive message from Embiid in that case. So from a team and an IP perspective, uh, and lastly, through that digital engagement, we do have the ability to track that engagement as well as capture first party data. So it's a data capture, it's an ongoing uh, engagement tool, and not the least of which it's a way to drive ancillary revenue. From a fan perspective, it's obviously the opportunity to capture and celebrate that fandom. You know, for everyone who was there the night Embiid scored 70, it's a way to have a tangible collectible from that event versus just simply a QR code in your Ticketmaster uh, app. Uh, I recently went to my 75th Springsteen show and I have nothing to show for it. Um, and yet I too have a shoebox full of hundreds of, of concert tickets. So it's the ability to record that, that, that moment. And because we can do things on demand in a meaningful way and with scale, the next night that, uh, you know, Jalen Brunson goes for 50 or, or Aaron Judge, you know, has a four home run night, we can capitalize on that by being in market within a matter of, of no time, within a matter of weeks and have this product 
manufactured and fulfilled in, in no time. And then the last piece of this, and I touched on this a little bit as an IP benefit for sponsors, for sponsors who are tied to key events like World Series or even teams, this is a way for them to have, again, their brand fully uh, immersed and exposed and in fans' hands in a meaningful way where they too can provide brand messaging uh, to their uh, to their consumers in a meaningful way. Yeah, it makes sense across all the different fronts. Curious then from a, a business model perspective, you know, what does it look like on the sweet chameleon side? You know, how are you generating those revenues? And then number two, off of that, what's it look like from, you know, the MLB wants a, a new product? What, what's, you know, what's the step by step? How do you get it to happen so quickly over those three weeks? And sure. design, so, yeah. so it all starts with ideation and our initial products are these collectible tickets with corresponding digital experiences. So we are creating everything from a collectible ticket from the event that you attended or something amazing happened right down to uh, collectibles celebrating things like championships and and major team events whether it be a 25th anniversary ballpark event we are also creating those jerseys and again working with the players associations to capitalize on the long tail what do those jerseys represent how are they important to their fandom, as well as creating authenticity and scarcity by doing these on a more limited edition basis with these amazing digital activations. So the, the products, and we're also looking at doing mini helmets, stadiums, really because we are leveraging 3D printing technology, uh, we can create anything. Uh, we just need to have a file. And in the case of individual players, and this is something we're looking to do for a number of the top tennis players in conjunction with the major tournaments is to scan them and to mm -hmm. have their own collectible figures that we will create again on a limited edition basis to start and have them provide corresponding digital content. Our revenue model is based on both direct to consumer. However, we will be rolling out in, in mass with a wholesale model that we will be leveraging through our sales team that will enable us to appear on third party channels like Fanatics through an Amazon presence, as well as within individual team shops. We are also looking to work with more expansive um, platforms and creator platforms to monetize those individual, I, their individual IP and having their massive social media scale and following be our, our marketing catalyst engine. Very cool. And Michael, curious from a standpoint, you've obviously penetrated some of the biggest leagues in sports, uh, you know, fairly efficiently, which are some of the, the logos a lot of people would dream of having on their website or, you know, on their decks or whatever. You know, how did you go about the sales process? Any learnings, insights that would be helpful to other people trying to sell B2B into the sports ecosystem? Sure. Uh, not easy. <laughs> Definitely leveraged, you know, my background in licensing and marketing and that of our advisors. Um, but again, we are a new company that has, you know, amazing IP partners currently with two of the four major North American sports leagues. And we are in active discussions with others. Really? what we proposed to them was something new. This was something that does not exist currently in the licensing. And for us, it was, and for us and them, it was, we are, you know, we have the ability to create these beautiful, spectacular, high quality products at scale with licensed IP. And that's really where our differentiation is, is, is happening. But it was a lot of persistence. It was a lot of prototyping. It was a lot of demonstrations, but I think um, there is a, you know, a shift in people's fandoms. There's the, you know, the in stadium and in arena, you know, market. And then there's an entirely different market taking shape both online through social media, as well as through, um, through Oculus and, and Vision Pro. And it's changing the nature of fandom. And we are looking to be the solution and answer for, for that corresponds with that new type of fandom. We are the new type of collectible. We are the 
the new shoebox full of of uh, of memorabilia that fans collect. Very cool. That's helpful. And just looking at uh, some stats here from from the collectible market, it's pretty pretty wild. There's and these are, I believe, 2023 stats for the most part. But 60 million plus global collectors. It's about a 230 billion dollar market. And if you look at toys and animation, that's more on the entertainment side. That's about a 35.6 billion dollar market. Action figures, two billion. Gaming, there's 3.3 across the globe. So pretty wild. But I guess. Off of that, you know, where how do you see the collectible space evolving? NFTs were very new to 99% of the population just a few years ago. And QR codes new yep. for a lot of people. So what's next? Where Where's it headed? So we are fishing where the fish are. That's why our licensed IP is so important to us. We are tapping into active, engaged fan communities that are only getting larger and it's not only the professional leagues, as you've documented in your prior podcasts and very, you know, you've highlighted both globally as well as on the local level, we tap into all of this. So as I mentioned, as these new, as the memorabilia and collectible markets continue to scale, we are filling that void with a, a new type of collectible. Again, we are not the one size fits all Tom Brady uh, you know, starting lineup figure that you buy for $12 at, at Walmart. This is a, a premium product that speaks specifically to your avatar, your favorite player, the event that you witnessed that night, the gameplay that you embarked upon playing Madden Championship Series, all of that. This is what we are tapping into. And we only see this becoming larger and larger as more and more IP expands from the pickleballs of the world to, you know, we're seeing it with all types of, of different sports that, you know, were previously, you know, weren't nice and have scale, but we, because of our ability again, to be in market within a matter of weeks, this is something that uh, we are changing the face of. And, uh, you know, that's why those IPs were always our North star in starting this business. Very cool. Anything else in sports in general outside of the collectible world that you're paying attention to? Uh, that, just uh, is interesting. Wa- watching the evolution of the AR VR experiences from holograms to voice AI to different mm-hmm. AR experiences. As that evolves, those technologies will become a core part of our tech stack that we are uh, evolving. So everything changes when and i should say the difference from digital and nft collectibles is when people see our collectibles and see and feel and touch and hold everything changes i want to leverage moving forward that hologram that ai ai ar vr technology to literally activate from our products so when someone is scanning a collectible figure or jersey or even a ticket that we produce or when they tap this, we want something, you know, more uh, interactive and engaging to evolve and literally come to life from this. From those player jerseys, we can easily see uh, an augmented reality version of that player appear. And then to have the AI uh, activity and voice recognition to almost have a conversation with it. That is the future of this, uh, of sports and collectibles. And for now, we are driving to dedicated content and landing pages and experiences and offers. But that's what we're incredibly excited about. That's awesome. Uh, From people looking to learn more, you know, what's uh, Sweet Chameleon website, you know, how to get in contact with you, any any, uh, spot socials. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can find us, you know, we have sweetchameleon.com. It will be relaunching shortly as a direct to consumer site with our products. As I mentioned, we are launching initially as a wholesale partner with our leagues and partners. Um, but otherwise uh, you can find sweet chameleon and me, Michael Dub, uh, on, on most major social channels. I love it. Well, Michael, appreciate you coming on, sharing the insights. And uh, it's unique. I haven't had anyone in this, certainly not in the really, well, we've had a few people from a collectible 
definitely not uh, this mix. I'm not even going to try to say that word again. Um, digital, um, digital. Digital. It's easier than I think. I keep seeing the G in the middle and I'm like scared of it. So I'm not saying yeah. it, I'll get it down. We can go with a silent G. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. 